Do you believe that individuals from these countries and illegal aliens in general should be allowed to exploit the medical system that you help oversee? Again, I'm, I'm here to talk about the HHS's proposed rule uh, to extend benefits to DACA recipients to ensure that their treatment is in line with other uh, deferred action uh, recipients. So you can't answer the question. Are you aware that China does not like the United States and that has engaged in espionage activities against the United States? I don't have any personal professional knowledge of, of that. Okay. Well, I suggest you read Breitbart. Well, it was suggested that you should read Breitbart, and I, I couldn't let it go. And so just for the general public, because I don't want anybody to believe that that's a good idea, I just got on Google, which if you have a cell phone, we can all do that. Breitbart News Network is an American far-right syndicated news opinion and commentary website found in mid-2007 by American conservative commentator Andrew Breitbart. Breitbart News content has been described as misogynistic, xenophobic, and racist by academics and journalists. So. I don't know that that's where I want anybody to take their cues from, especially when they're trying to run this country. Expanding benefits in this way would not deter illegal immigration. In fact, it encourages more individuals to take the dangerous trek across our borders illegally. And to put the cost of illegal immigration into perspective, illegal immigration has a net cost of approximately $151 billion per year. This cost is not incurred by illegal aliens that are coming to the United States, but instead paid for by hardworking Americans, while those breaking the law have zero financial accountability. And and let's be clear, whenever they show pictures of DACA recipients, they typically send, tend to show Hispanic children, when in actuality it's more than just the Hispanic demographic. So I guess the question for you would be, you're in charge of a program that's costing American taxpayers millions and billions of dollars, and yet you're sitting here refusing to answer questions about whether or not that's fair or uh, there's certain terminology being used for these programs. I guess. I guess my suggestion to you would be is that our rules that we have in place are in place for a reason. DACA is political is what I heard just now. Just to be clear, uh, you've testified that DACA recipients are considered to be lawfully present, correct? Uh, that's correct. I have, I've said that under uh, the Department of Homeland Security's uh, longstanding definition, DACA recipients are, are considered lawfully present. Right, they're not considered illegals, they're considered to be lawfully present. But lawfully present doesn't mean that you have the right to vote, correct? Uh, I, would, I would defer to my Only, uh, well I'll give it to you, only U.S. citizens can vote. And so therefore this idea that it's political or as if the Biden administration is about to rack up some votes is just another falsehood. In fact, all we continue to get is half-baked ideas and half-baked or half-lies or half-truths, whichever way you wanna look at it. Let's talk about the half-baked ideas first though. Um, my colleague, Miss Lee, brought up the fact that we're talking about expanding access to pregnant women and children, correct? Uh, in, in the Medicaid program, yes. Okay, and this is only in states that have extended Medicaid, correct? Uh, this is in the, under the proposal, uh, this would impact uh, the, the 35, uh, roughly 35 states who have um, chosen the option to cover lawfully residing uh, pregnant individuals as well as children. Okay, so we're talking about pregnant women, and have you heard of the Dobbs decision? I have. Okay, all right, so uh, we have a party that says Seemingly, what would Jesus do? Seemingly, that's how they govern themselves. And so they've decided that all women should just bear all the children and not have any rights to decide what they're going to do. And so even under this set of circumstances, they think that it's great that all women should just be pregnant, but they don't want them to have any access to health care. That sounds like a half-baked idea to me, to say that forget life when it comes to say the life of the mother, because that's a real thing, because if you have health care, and I don't know how deeply you've delved into this, but we have been talking, and when I say we, I mean the Democrats, have been talking about the fact that we have a terrible maternal mortality rate in this country, and when you start talking about people of color or people of lower socioeconomic means, that rate goes up even more astronomically. And so the idea that people are already dying, it, let me be clear, 
are there people that tend to be at a higher risk when they don't have access to health care when they're pregnant? It, yes, it is, it is our belief that um, being insured leads to better health outcomes. Thank you. Let's also just talk about these half-truths. Really, they're just full lies. I was trying to be nice. The reality is that they're trying to make this into the immigration boogeyman that they always talk about, yet we've yet to have a bill on the floor that has been proposed in the form of a policy around immigration. Instead, what they want to do is continue to treat immigrants as if they are the big, bad boogeyman. And so we're sitting here and we're talking about a program and you've tried to, and you've remained composed. So let me compliment you for that. Because my colleagues on the other side of the aisle continue to ask you about the border. What in this bill or this policy, I'm sorry, this rule change, what in this rule change has anything to do with the border? Just give me one thing that it has to do with the border. One. Okay, exactly. It doesn't, right? It doesn't. But for some reason, they believe if they say it, that it's true. I would love to live in a world where whatever I say somehow is true. But the reality is that if they want immigration reform, they are in control of the House and they can put a bill on the floor. But they don't want to do that because they want to continue to say that immigrants are the big, bad boogeyman. Thank you for your service. This has nothing to do with immigration. It has everything to do with being good citizens and good lawmakers and good public servants who actually just give a darn about people. Thank you.